Hey everybody, Brian Goulet here and Drew Brown is hey. accompanying me here. We're here from GouletPens.com and we are picking our top pens of 2018. These are ones that were released or at least came to our store in 2018. It's not going to be an exhaustive list, but it's ones that we find to be the best this year. It's not in any particular rank order except for number one, which is going to come all the way at the end, so make sure you watch all the way through. All right, well, we're going to kick things off today with the Conklin Duraflex. And this was pretty important because it featured the Conklin Omniflex nib, which they're still making now on other pens, but the Duraflex, which only came in black with rose gold trim, was the first pen to actually feature this nib. And it was really exciting because it was a major manufacturer putting out a flex nib, and that is just not something that happens very often. They're not perfect. It's a steel flex nib with a feed that, you know, isn't super prepared for the amount of ink that it needs, but it still allowed a lot of people to have some fun and uh, get a really good, unique writing experience. Yep. All right, next one we got to talk about is the Jin Hao Shark Pen. We kind of jumped the shark on this one. Ah. Just can't resist. Um, but, you know, here's the thing. It wasn't brand new to Jin Hao or to the world, but it was brand new to us. And it made a huge impression. I mean, it's been such an overwhelmingly popular pen. We had no idea how it would do. It made a splash. It did. <laughs> <laughs> should have said it on this one. You should have. Yeah. Oh, well, too late. Um, but, uh, you know, it came out and we weren't sure. There's like 10 colors that this game comes out in, and we only came out with five at first. We were like, really? How popular is this going to be? Well, it was really stinking popular. So we quickly came out with the rest of them. And uh, what's not to love? It's a fun pen, very affordable. Very affordable. Reliable writer, fun for all ages. All right, next up we get to talk about Montegrappa because in 2018 we released the Elmo, which was amazing because it was the most affordable Montegrappa pen I had ever seen. Isn't this the first one the first ever, ever had? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was priced really, really well. Steel nib, but that steel nib was polished like gold. It was a That's beautiful awesome. pen to write with, had some nice heft to it. And we first um, launched one in the Rosso uh, Silegio. Chilegio. Also Chilegio. Chilegio, and then the Verde Altipiano. Altipiano. So both pens, obviously green and a, uh, kind of, what would you call it, burgundy-ish? Burgundy. Yeah, both beautiful pens. They paired really nicely together. The material had really nice depth, and there's going to be more coming down the pipeline soon, which is also super exciting. So the next one we got to talk about is the Diplomat Magnum. Now, Diplomat as a brand, as a whole, was something that was kind of out there, but not a lot of people had an awareness of it. Yeah, 2018, um, it really popped up. It really popped, yeah. They changed distributorship, and that really shifted things for yeah. the U.S. market for this brand. Um, and the Magnum was the one that was kind of the breakout. Yeah, um, so cool. Affordability, it has a Yo steel Yovo nib, most affordable one that I'm aware of on any pen. Very light pen, some good colors. Just a great all-around starter pen. And the surprising thing is that pen has been around for 40 years. I can't believe that. 40 years I that pen has that. been around. No one knew about it. So it was just a sleeper. It was just waiting there to be discovered. Like the Cave of Wonders. Like Aladdin going in and finding the lamp. That's what this Magnum was. Oh my God. Let's talk about Twisby. Let's do it. Because in 2018, we saw the emergence of the Twisby Go. Which, I mean, what can't oh, you yeah. say? Like, it's oh, got it a crazy... It came. It's still here. It's yeah. going. It's gone. Still going. Get one. Some are it's, gone. It's got a really cool filling mechanism. And what would you call that? A uh, um, vacuumatic? Is that what that thing is? Yeah, it's a piston, but it's like a pump piston. As yeah, it's opposed super to a cool. Piston. And the crazy thing is that Twisby is actually disrupting themselves in coming up with new, unique, and affordable writing instruments. And it just blows my mind that they're saying, you know what? The Eco, as amazing and affordable and great as it is, isn't good enough. Let's go one further. And. I, if you don't have one, get one. It's super cheap. It's an awesome pen. I mean, what more is there to say about it? It's a fun pen that everybody should have, and it's great to get people into the uh, hobby as well. So now I got another new whole brand that came on our radar this year. This is Opus 88, specifically the Demonstrator. So yeah. they have a number of pens that are clear demonstrators, some that have ebonite, but they're all eyedropper fillers. So got some interesting things going on with this brand out of Taiwan. But the one that was the clear standout <laughs> was the Demonstrator. And we know from carrying other demonstrators to get this level of clarity on a pen like this is actually really hard. It's a lot of labor. So to get one even as affordable as $120 like this is phenomenal. Yeah. It's got a Yovo steel nib on it, so they're really great writers. The pen just looks amazing, a really hefty, really solid looking pen. It's speaking been amazingly of popular. The nib, this one, the clear one, has a number six nib on it, so it increases right. its versatility as well. Absolutely, and you get to see the ink sloshing back and forth. Yeah. It's super satisfying, and really glad to see this one come on the scene. 
Brian, what year-end review would be complete without mentioning the Lamy Special Editions? Of course. I feel like this kind of has to be on the list every year because yeah. it's a really popular pen, right? Now, what was unique about this year, though, is that a lot of times Lamy will come out with their Special Edition and it will make headlines, you know, headlines-ish, because... <laughs> In it, our world, you know. People will hear about it because there aren't enough to go around. Yeah, or and, because they come out with an ink and it sells out in like two hours. Right. That's what it's been the last couple of years anyway. And that didn't happen this year. Yeah. So it might not have felt the same as years past, but less, that's actually a good thing. Less drama probably than past right. years. Right, because they had enough. Yeah. And if you wanted one, you were more likely able to get one. Yeah, exactly. But that to say, more people actually got these pens and got this ink. So we're talking specifically about the Vibrant Pink All-Star right. and the All Black Safari. The All Black especially was really, because it was black, it was stealthy. It just kind of was under the radar kind of all year. It didn't have an ink to pair with it, but it really just... Just kind of was selling all year. Right, it was which there is, for you all year. I thought was a little uh, surprising because they already have the charcoal safari close, yeah. and a shiny black safari. Yeah. But this yeah. one, it hit that right spot where it if did. you wanted a matte black, that was kind of it. Kind of right is is in between those two. Yeah. And people have been loving it. So it'll be interesting to see where they go from here because now they've got a pattern of coming yeah. out of these pretty much every year, and I think we're going to see even more craziness come out in 2019. So. Very excited to see what it'll probably be on the list next year as well. All right, another one that you may or may not remember from this year was the Platinum 3776 Kumpu. Uh, the reason you may not remember it is because it came and it went, it was just gone because it was such a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Yeah, like we did not have them for very long, maybe a few hours, a couple days at most for the whole time because they were just gone immediately. So Honestly, I'm putting this on this list partly because I want Platinum to make more of them. I just want to bring Seriously. it back. Bring it back. That's the, all. The color. Gorgeous color. The texture. The texture. We've had Platinum pens in the past that have been special edition, and the, the cuts and the ridges. Yeah, like the fluting on it, it kind of hits it, your hand weird or Yeah, something, it's been but... a little tactically strange, but this pen, it's textured, but also smooth and comfortable, and God, that color. Looks awesome. So not available anymore, but Platinum, bring it back. All right. The Peniter La Grande Bellezza. This pen wasn't new for 2018, but it had sort of was though. Right, exactly. Because revamp, revamp, remodel, way, way remodel. And we're not talking just like one thing added. They really kind of recreated this pen. They did for the better, with the addition of the quill nib. Yeah, that well, nib. Well, it was. Uh, get, I was gonna say the pen's getting kind of stale because it had been out for like six months. Oh yeah, you need know? to revamp. So. Dante can't not revamp, you know. <laughs> That's right. But no, Dante Del Vecchio, huge innovator in the fountain pen community for a very long time, did revamp this pen, added the quill nib, which is a really soft, bouncy, beautiful writing experience. And I will say my personal favorite nib as far as aesthetics go. I think this thing is beautiful. Really? It, uh, yes. If you I, go that far to say it's your yes, favorite? Yes, it is gorgeous. It's got okay. design. The angles are so, so, so very beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful nib. I think it's sharp, gorgeous. I think it's pretty, super well, pretty. Not only the nib, but it was the, the materials too. So yeah. they, they came out with a pen originally and it was really just like, it was their foray. It was the first pen that kind of came out from Pneider, yeah. which Dante's trying to build that pen brand up from the ground up. Cause they've been a paper company for like years. Yeah. Um, but uh, they revamped it, Dante, you know, didn't rest on his own laurels for six months. Um, came out with it again, came out with a nib, did the material, which was not only new colors, but he actually came up with this, this basically his own custom mixture, which was impregnated marble powder into the resin of the pen. So it made it more dense, more durable, heavier. It's really, really cool and some interesting stuff going on. There's a lot really, going on in that pen. It kind of like put Peniter on the pen scene for 2018. For good reason. And it's time for our number one spot of pens that came out in 2018. And this one is actually seven pens. The Namiki Seven Gods of Good Fortune set to celebrate Pilot's 100th anniversary. We did a whole separate unboxing video on this one with John Lane of Pilot USA. Epic. And I gotta say, this pen just blew me away. I mean, we, we had heard a little bit in advance what was gonna come, but they largely kept it completely secret for about three years yeah. as they were developing these pens and creating them. The level of craftsmanship and artistry that went into these pens that was just incredible. And even though it wasn't something that was widely available, because they only made 25 sets in the entire world, 
to celebrate their anniversary, and there was only four right. sets that made into the U.S. We, we got one. We got one, and it's now happily sitting in a collector's hands. Um, it was still just something that we wanted to capture on video because it's the kind of set that only comes around once every hundred years, and it just completely blew us away. Not only the pens and the thought behind it, all related to prosperity and good fortune, but the presentation. Right. I was gonna the say box. when you Holy open up, cow. when you see that lid, and you're like, okay, I'm starting to understand the hype behind this. When you look at the box lid and you were blown away, then you know you're in for something special. Absolutely, and it's by far the most expensive pen set that we have ever seen by here far. at $48,000. By but far. It wasn't just over hype. It, they truly put their passion, the romance behind the brand, and they went back to their roots to celebrate their 100th anniversary. And for that reason, it tops our list. It's for a masterpiece. Now, I'm sure that you're gonna have some opinions about some of what was on our list. We have opinions too. You know, there were a lot that were so close that we almost include on the list, but you know, we had to narrow it down. So these were our top 10, but we would love to hear your top 10 or maybe some of your thoughts about what we included. So let us have it. Let us have it in the comments. Don't hold back. Part of this is to keep things interesting and uh, generate some uh, some comments and some controversy perhaps. So let us know what you think in the comments. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you are so inclined, like what we're doing here. Or if you're not inclined. You can check out some of these pens that we still have available maybe, but others you may are just in the historical ether out there, or past videos and vlogs and such. Uh, but you can check out more information about some of these on goulaypens.com. Drew, thanks for joining this video. Thanks so much for watching, and 